been a w big week, of course, for artificial intelligence with Microsoft announcing it is taking on Google in search with an open AI powered version of Bing. Today, John Fort brings us up close with a startup CEO whose company is building on top of open AI tools and who knows what it's uh, like to be an underdog. John. Yeah, Tyler. Uh, Dion Nicholas is co-founder and CEO of Forethought. It's a company bringing together uh, deeper AI into customer service. The Series C startup has raised more than $90 million in funding and this week made G2's list of the best analytics and AI products. Now, Dion grew up in Toronto and showed talent in both basketball and computers. Eventually in high school, he had to decide which one to pour himself into, chose tech. The early going was rough, though. As one of the only black kids in his classes, he wondered if he belonged. And when he first started doing computer programming competitions, he lost a lot. You have contests every single week, and I'm usually doing pretty poorly. Like, I'm getting beat down every single every single day uh, that I do a contest. I'm not, you know, in the top one or top two. There's 100 people. I'm in, I'm in 75, right? And so each of those moments are, are actually pretty painful. Um, and then eventually, you, you know, you have one big contest, another big contest, another big contest. And then all of a sudden, when you look back, you're like, Okay, I did it. I'm I'm 13th in the world at the Olympics of computer programming, right? And so that was. Um, I've had many moments where you know I felt I couldn't do it. I caught up with Dion last week to talk about the surging interest in AI technology and what it means for Forethought. He told me he sees big opportunities for companies prepared to build industry-specific products on top of platforms like the one Microsoft and OpenAI are offering. He hopes to be the leader in AI-driven customer support. We've seen that with Writer AI. We've seen that with Jasper AI in the marketing world. Um, we believe, and when we looked around, we were actually the first um, generative AI company in customer support automation because we've actually been applying some of these models since GPT-2. And so there, we believe that the future is actually leveraging these technologies, abstracting away um, all of the complexity, and then building systems and products on top that learn from your specific data. And that is a key piece. It's one thing for these large language models uh, to be good at general conversation. Companies need them to be good at talking uh, about their business and their industry. And that's why there's going to be room for a lot of smaller winners in the AI era of enterprise software, guys. Amazing. Remarkable on a number of fronts. Yeah. we were, As I said earlier, we were chatting offline. A couple of the producers and I were chatting offline. I, I, one of the things that frustrates me is not being able to get a human being on the line when I call customer service. And they inevitably give me a menu of about nine items none of which ever, ever precisely hit on what I want to know. Is AI going to be able to do that? And as, as Gino, one of our producers, said, uh, are they going to be able to troubleshoot my problem the way a human could? That is the promise of things like ChatGPT, which knows how to talk well. It knows how right? to talk well. But about what, right? Very general. So what it's able to scrape up on the Internet, what you feed it. The challenge is to know how to train it to talk about airline policy, right, if you're an airline, and to know exactly what your history is as a customer at that airline. So who's going to be skilled enough company-wise to target airline industry, teach it those terms, feed it the data from a particular airline so that it can talk to you, Tyler? Mm -hmm. That's where the race is right now. But it's brilliant right because once you have the tools that can can generate language, and you all you need to do is give it your business model, for instance, and then it can help be more communicative. I mean, you can see this working across a number of businesses, not just customer service, but even something like CNBC. If, if I'm up there and, I, and I'm typing in there with all the data that we have our, ac our access to, and it's able to give me on the fly concept, what's the 10-year doing right now? Okay, <laughs> give me the, you know, the, what are the break, you know, and it's, it's more of a conversation. You can see this being Taking data in, in enterprise mm. and wrapping it with AI, you can see this powering the whole next generation of startups. Absolutely. And right now, there's a balance between book smarts, which is one thing that you can teach something to talk generally, and then street smarts of knowing about particular subject areas, the nuances of them, and how to feel natural and actually educate or inform in conversation. Th that's a challenge. I, I was just talking to the CEO of Freshworks a few minutes ago. Right. They had earnings a few days and they're also in customer support. And he said that this moment uh, for technology is similar to an iPhone moment or a browser yes. moment mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to A.I. And he and his team are at work right now trying to do exactly the sorts of things. And by the way, about. how impressive is Dion Nicholas himself? I mean, that's yeah. what yeah. I was like. A, a wow. study in persistence. You yes. know? Absolutely. Yeah, just in persistence. That's, Thank you, John. We appreciate it. Much. John Fort.